For AI character design, we can start with the different character archetypes. These represent the personality, emotions, and motivations of the character, which forms the foundation of who they are. For example, the hero is a good guy who's courageous, strong, and determined. He's kind-hearted and stands for justice, overcoming any obstacles in his way. The villain is evil and stands to oppose the hero. She represents the dark side of human nature and is driven by envy, greed, or revenge. One of my favorites is a delinquent high school dropout who somehow always ends up in a motorcycle game. He acts tough on the outside but is actually soft on the inside. This is one of the most common anti-heroes in anime. Then there's a lover who's driven by the pursuit of romance. She's compassionate and probably overly idealistic, which unfortunately opens her up to heartbreaks. By the way, I'll be using the Niji model in Midjourney for this video guide, so make sure to type dash dash Niji 6 into your prompts if you want to follow along. Some other common personalities include the overly loud and passionate young man. He's annoying at first, but you'll grow to love him. Then there's the strong silent type. He's reliable, but can be overly serious at times. Some characters are quiet and shy around strangers. Others are more outgoing and playful. I think both are relatable, and we all know someone like each of them. You've got the class president, who's smart, attractive, and seemingly perfect on the outside, although she can come off as arrogant, and also the tomboy who can hold her own against anybody. Magic users such as witches and magicians are also a pretty common character type, and they can take on all sorts of different personalities. They're usually more intelligent than the average person, but also tend to be physically fragile. And let's not forget that there's plenty of regular everyday people just living their lives. When it comes to character archetypes, we have a lot more options than just human subjects. Elves and orcs are the most popular ones in popular culture. Elves are nimble and quick, and use ranged attacks to their advantage. While orcs are big, strong brutes that try to overpower everything. They're usually not the smartest ones. Demons are creatures from the underworld who cause pain and suffering with no remorse. You wouldn't want to run into her in a dark alley. Dwarves are tough and won't go down easily. You'd want this guy to be on your side in a fight. Here's an image of a boy devil. We can effectively generate hybrid human forms with special body parts, like the wings on this boy. You can also use animal avatars instead of just humans for characters. I tried a couple of simple ones here, but you can use any animals you'd like. These usually work pretty well, although they didn't do a great job of following the anime style prompted for, which was My Hero Academia. Colors show personality and emotions beyond the physical shapes. Bright red colors represent passion, aggression, and anger, while light blue or green gives a more chill and laid back vibe. The hero archetype frequently has a light blue color theme used on them. In the rest of this video, we'll talk about hairstyles and body types for your characters, which are the major visual ideas. Then we'll walk through the finer details, like what types of powers they may have, the weapons they use, the type of fashion and attire they like to wear, and finally, what kinds of art styles you can try. The hairstyle of the character shows a lot about their personality and identity. An edgy haircut can imply a strong personality, while a more messy haircut seems rebellious. So it's extremely important to choose an appropriate hairstyle for your character. As far as the boys go, we can go for a longer hairstyle like long wavy hair or dreadlocks. Longer hair gives an appearance of mystery. There must be something hidden about the personality. It also looks more elegant. Shorter styles show efficiency and strength. These include a hard and sharp buzz cut, a mohawk, or just generic short hair. Other fun styles for men include spiky anime hair, a long mullet, or an afro. You can also try adding facial hair, like a mustache, a goatee, or a full beard. Adding facial hair gives a sense of maturity and masculinity, although not everyone can pull off a mustache. Popular hairstyles for female characters include longer wavy hair or long straight hair. You could add some snakes for the Medusa haircut. Other hairstyles for girls include the ponytail, which appears more straightforward and professional, pigtails for a more playful and feminine look, or shorter hair with bangs down the forehead, 
which always looks good. Of course, we can mix and match. There's nothing preventing a girl from rocking a mohawk or a man from wearing a ponytail. I also had some fun experimenting with adding elements like fire or water into the hair. Just adding something like she has flowing fire for hair and we'll get a woman with flames rising from her head. I've showed a bunch of hairstyles with anime colors, but we can always go with regular colors like black, brunette, blonde, or gray hair. Anytime you add in red eyes, it makes your character look a bit more evil than usual. I really like the combination of black hair and red eyes for antagonists. For something more elegant and high class, try using white hair or crystal and translucent hair combined with yellow eyes. It's a great look for someone of royal status. The body type of your character defines their silhouette. It might give some insight into their personality and helps them become instantly recognizable even from a far distance. For men, you've got the super buff guy who's a gym rat, the overweight guy with a pot belly, or a regular sized boy who's a bit on the skinny side. Common character body types for women include the buff muscular superhero girl, the more curvy ladies, and the average typical high school student. These are our typical human silhouettes, but if you want to get more creative, try combining human bodies with animal body parts like claws, tails, ears, or wings. These combinations may show specific powers or a more interesting origin story. Human and animal hybrid characters tend to have some mythological component to their backgrounds and have a strong bond with the natural world. On the opposite end, human robot cyborgs represent the advancement of human technology probably to the detriment of the natural world. You can add in robot arms, wings, and legs, or go with a person who's completely been replaced with cyborg parts. Cyborgs possess enhanced physical and mental abilities, but may struggle with their personal identity. It's often unclear whether they're more human or machine at this point. The weapons your character uses show a lot about the world that they inhabit but also convey their personality, whether they'd prefer to overpower with brute force or use a more tactical approach to get what they want. Starting with the elements, someone who uses fire, wind, or lightning might be wild and aggressive, often throwing caution to the wind and going all out 100% of the time. Someone who uses ice or water appears more calm and calculated. They'll choose a tactical approach while using their superior intelligence to defeat their opponents. Of course, these are just my personal observations and not strict guidelines. There's a lot of fun to be had with experimenting with different weapons. Some will prefer huge heavy weapons like this giant sword, the lava hammer, or the hard hitting axe. Try embedding different powers and elements into your weapons like fire or lava. This will help your character stand out a bit from the crowd. You can also go with smaller and faster weapons like an icy sword or dual wielding blades. These characters look like they're more mobile and probably use their speed to their advantage. There's a ton of other weapons to try out. I'm just showing some of my favorites here. The scythe is one of the most underrated weapons and needs to be used a lot more. So far, we've seen a bunch of medieval weapons, but what about something more modern? Firearms are extremely popular for anime characters. These feature powerful explosives that leave a big impact. You can go with something more hard hitting like a rocket launcher or a bazooka. These types of characters tend to be a bit on the crazy side and love to blow stuff up. You can also try something that's faster and more nimble like pistols. The Bleach anime art style is especially suited to generating characters that wield firearms. Other common props include pets. Animals like dogs, cats, birds or even robot drones make perfect companions to go along with their characters on their adventures. For fashion, you're only really limited by your imagination. There's all different types of armor you can try, from shiny medieval knight armor to stealthy ninja attire. I really like the way my characters look with the straw hats on. I think it adds an aura of mystery to them. Here's a couple examples applied to female characters. For modern attire, one tip to try is styling your characters after specific themes like mushrooms or strawberries. I combine streetwear with fruits, flowers, and plants and the results turn out pretty well. 
You can go with professional attire like this suit or something more casual like a goth and punk type of outfit, going to the gym or the everyday white t-shirt and blue jeans. Here's a couple examples of futuristic fashion trends. Once again, we can introduce cyborg body parts to add in that element of technology and advancement. To personalize your characters even more, adding some accessories. Earrings or necklaces can give them a bit of an edge. Sunglasses make them look confident, although it may come off as arrogance. Then there's regular glasses, which make them appear a lot more intelligent. The guy on the right looks like some kind of a scientist. Here's a couple examples of headwear. I typically like wearing bucket hats myself, but the beret hat is a really unique style and makes your character look more like a creative and sophisticated type of person. I know you're curious about what anime art styles I used in this tutorial. My Hero Academia has the biggest variety of character designs that I've seen in any show and is great for generating characters with different looks and with different powers. It's probably the most flexible style I tried. Demon Slayer has really nice looking characters and costumes, but not quite the same level of prompt flexibility as the other animes. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure has a lot of western influence in its character design, with colorful costumes, and it tends to be more flamboyant. Hunter x Hunter is pretty good all around. There's a lot of variety in costume designs, and the visual style is one of my favorites. Finally, there's Bleach. It's probably the best for creating a variety of different weapons, especially if you want firearms. It's also my favorite show, so I do like prompting with it. These are just some of my favorites. There's plenty of other art styles to try out. The most commonly used one is probably Studio Ghibli, although its characters are fairly generic compared to the other styles I mentioned. Before you try out character designs, you should know that the Niji anime model is still an experimental model, and it's not quite as good as a regular mid-journey model at generating normal photographs. The prompt understanding still isn't as strong, and it can struggle to generate all the elements of your prompt correctly. You might have also noticed that it has a really hard time with hands and fingers. It won't always work the way you want, but it's a lot of fun to try out. If you want to learn how to take your character design and put them in all sorts of different environments, show them from different camera angles, and have them doing all sorts of different activities, go and check out this video guide I made over here on the character consistency feature in Midjourney.